Hello everyone, uh, thank you for joining me tonight. You're very welcome. I'm glad that you could come along and we're going to have a great time tonight um, as we continue to look at Max Lucado's Unshakable Hope. Uh, and tonight the theme is you will have power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And certainly this is very true. Tonight and this Halloween night, lots of people will be celebrating the occult and the and the, the realm of, of Satan's power. But tonight we will be glorifying Jesus. We will be glorifying him as we bring ourselves to him and worship him. And as he delivers people from the power of the occult and from Satan's realm. And so tonight as we worship God, let us celebrate Jesus. Let us learn from him. Let us listen from the Holy Spirit, which brings power. And so just to open tonight, let's just take a piece from Jesus Calling, which is dated, today's date, the 31st of October. And it reads, Learn to listen to me even while you are listening to other people. As they open their souls to your scrutiny, you are on holy ground. You need the help of my spirit to respond appropriately. Ask him to think through you, live through you, love through you. My own being is alive within you in the person of the Holy Spirit. If you respond to others' needs through your undeigned thought process, unaided thought process, you offer them dry crumbs. When the Spirit empowers your listening and speaking, my streams of living water flow through you to other people. Be a channel of my love, joy and peace by listening to me as you listen to others. Thank God for the Holy Spirit and for that word tonight. And let us just pray before we, we bring the, the, the exhortation tonight. Let's just pray and ask the Holy Spirit to come and to reveal himself through his servant. Let's pray. Holy Spirit of God, I thank you for this night. I thank you for every person listening to this video. Holy Spirit, I just ask you to come and empower me and speak through me the word of God, the truth of God. I ask that God would be glorified, that the people would, would listen and, and understand and receive the power of the Holy Spirit themselves. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would illuminate us and fill us with yourself and teach us as our teacher that we may learn from you, that we may grow in grace, that our lives may be enriched and filled with the power of God. And so, Lord God, we just commit this time to you now. And I pray for every person here, Father, that you would meet their need and reach them in whatever their need is, Father. For it is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's just sing along together to that wonderful hymn. To God be the glory, great things he has done.
Testament reading is taken from Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 25 to 27. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remo remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Amen. The second reading tonight is taken from the New Testament, from John's Gospel, chapter 3, verses 5 to 8. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Amen.
have power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. That same power is given to every believer who asks the Holy Spirit of God to come in and fill them as we confess our sin to Jesus and we become his disciples. When the first disciples received the infilling of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, they were filled with the power of God, which is given to every person who asks and believes. But we have to want it. We have to ask for it daily. For Jesus wants a two-way relationship with us so that we can understand and experience what it's really like to be a disciple and the cost that comes with it. Jesus never promised anyone a guaranteed ministry or a, a level of certain income. We may never be popular and we are not guaranteed perfect, perfect health or success. Jesus didn't say there would be no struggles, trials or temptations. But he did promise us the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit when we give our lives to him. The Holy Spirit is central to the life of the Christian. The Christian may have the Holy Spirit, but does the Holy Spirit have them? Some choose not to activate the power that is within them. Everything that happens since the book of Acts in the New Testament till the end of the age is a result of the work of the Holy Spirit of God. The Spirit was the push the disciples needed to urge them on to fulfill the work of Christ, to proclaim the gospel, to show the world the way back into a right relationship with our Creator. It is the Holy Spirit of God who convinces, convicts and converts. It is not through human works or abilities, but God just uses people as vessels in which the Spirit can work through. We all need a push and encouragement from the Holy Spirit as he will nudge us into what is right for each one as we yield to the Spirit every day. After Jesus ascended into heaven, the Holy Spirit became the primary agent of the Trinity on earth. He will be a guide, a comforter and counsellor. The Spirit will give us power and unity and supervision and holiness. The Holy Spirit will enter a believer upon confession of faith. The word tells us in Ezekiel 36 and 26, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. From that point, the believer has access to the power and personality of God. And every believer who receives the Spirit of God has access to all the gifts of the Spirit. Acts 2 and verse 17, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. All will have access to this and more. There is power in that blood that Jesus shed for us on that cross. From the Holy Spirit comes the fivefold ministry. Some apostles, some prophets some evangelists, pastors and teachers. The apostle lives with the leaders. The prophet lives with God. The evangelist lives with the lost. The pastor lives with the people. And the teacher lives with the word. Different roles but the same spirit and the one body for the glory of God and for the building of his kingdom. The seven gifts of the Holy Spirit are wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety and the fear of the Lord which all have access to if people will just believe and receive. The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control and gentleness, which are fruits that others should see in the life of a believer. All these gifts and ministries come from the one Holy Spirit and is part of the Trinity of God, the Helper and the Comforter for every believer. And sometimes we don't always see those fruits of the Spirit in a believer's life. And you know why that is? Because we are not perfect. We are just human beings, every one. And even though we have the Spirit of God, doesn't mean to say we get it wrong. Sometimes you don't see those fruits in my life either. Because I'm not perfect either. But human. Human. Yeah. So don't be quick to judge others or, or condemn them to say that they're not of God. 
because we are not to, to, to judge anyone. Jesus will judge. Jesus will show us who is false and who is true. We are to enjoy the gifts of the Spirit and be free and be free to serve God with joy in our hearts, knowing that we're not perfect, knowing that we can be forgiven and will be forgiven when we get it wrong. The Holy Spirit knows each saint and knows the needs of the church. He distributes gifts according to what the church will need in a particular region and season. When gifts are active in the church, the church is empowered to do the work for which it was intended. And for this reason, we do not begrudge the talents of another believer or accomplishments of another church. Does the saxophone player envy the tuba player? Not when each musician is playing his or her unique part and following the lead of the conductor. When church members do the same, the result is power, and the result is unity. For just as the body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts from one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized in one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Let's go back to the book of Acts at Pentecost and copy the first believers when God told them. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now we may not go to the ends of the earth to use the power we have to heal the sick, cast out demons and preach the gospel. But we can use what we have where we're at. A chat with a neighbour. Or a kind smile to someone might mean more to them at, at that time than any sermon. A helping hand to someone in need is using the power of the Spirit. Simple acts of kindness or kind words have power. There is so much opportunity for the believer to use the power of the Spirit and we all have access to that. Maybe you're just happy going through the motions in life, going to work doing the shop and looking after the children and the grandchildren, going to church and doing your little bit. That's all fine and Jesus loves you very much. Nothing will ever change that. But if you want to experience life abundant that Jesus offers to every believer, and if you're willing to spend time with him to seek him out and discover all he has for you, if you're willing to pay the price to discover who you really are and how wonderful your life can be, then spend time every day and be filled with the Spirit of God. I certainly don't want to stand before the Saviour to have him say to me, look at what I had for you. It was all there for you. Don't allow fear to cripple you and stop you from stepping out in faith because Satan creates fear in us to stop us from discovering the wonderful spiritual blessings that God has. But God's perfect love casts out all fear and we will, he will never fail us. He will never make a fool of you. He longs for us to enjoy him rather than endure him. And if your walk with Jesus is an endurance, then take some time out alone with him and get rid of the clutter in your life and enjoy the freedom of being in his presence as he invites us to come and rest in him and allow him to speak to us. The enemy will create busyness in our lives so that it will prevent us from a richer, fuller walk with Christ. Don't let that happen to you. What the Holy Spirit will do for the church is comfort the believers, guide the believer into all truth, reveal the things that are still to come, offer prayers of intercession, bear witness that the saint is saved, attest to the presence of God with signs and miracles, create a God-like atmosphere of truth, wisdom and freedom. You will have power because Jesus made that possible for all who will accept his lordship and receive the Holy Spirit. Don't just accept, accept life with all its difficulties and clutter, but embrace the gospel and build a relationship with Jesus and the Holy Spirit of God. For this is the real deal. This is so exciting as we wait on the Lord to do a new thing in us and through us, as only he can. But there is nothing and no one can bring us life and joy and purpose like Jesus can and wants all of us to experience this life and joy abundant. 
He came to give us life and free us from the power of Satan who holds us in fear. But Jesus came to set us free, and because he paid that ultimate sacrifice for every one of us, there really is wonder-working power in the blood. Thank you for joining in with me tonight. I hope and I pray that God would have spoken to you through the Holy Spirit and will encourage you to go on and seek the Holy Spirit for yourself. Can I recommend a book to you called Good Morning Holy Spirit by Benny Hinn? It is a wonderful book, an encouragement and an inspiration. And there are many other wonderful books about the Holy Spirit that you can read up on as well. But I just encourage you there to press in and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you into all truth. And I just pray that you will be blessed and you will be glor God will be glorified in your life as you seek him in the future. Uh, now I'd like us all just to stand and clap and sing together the wonderful words of the great worship song. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's wonder working power in the blood. God bless you all.